Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christie. My name is Dr. Christy Reisinger, and today I'm gonna to speak to the myth that Ozempic causes osteoporosis. I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen the video of that precious woman talking about her experience with Ozempic, using it for a year, and then realizing that she has developed osteoporosis. Let me speak to a few things. I don't know her personally. I don't know her past medical history, but I'm going to clarify a few things and dispel a few myths and misinformation. I'm going to speak to you as though I'm speaking to someone in my office. So here goes. Osteoporosis is thinning of the bones to the point at which you are at a greater risk for fracture, especially fracture of the vertebral bones, which are the big bones in the spine, or fracture of the hip. And it really becomes a huge deal for women after menopause. Having a low BMI increases your risk for osteoporosis. A family history also increases your risk for osteoporosis. We normally don't see it until women are much older, at least beyond menopause. There has been some data that has said the GLP-1 medications, which include Ozempic, Wagovi, Manjaro, and Zetbound, are possibly protective on bone health, meaning that they help prevent the thinning of bones, but I don't think there's a whole lot of data on that yet. I do know that rapid weight loss can contribute to the risk of bone loss, leading to osteoporosis. So if you are on a GLP-1 medication and you're rapidly titrating up, meaning that every month your doctor or whoever you're getting it from is going up on the medication without taking into consideration how much weight you're losing, that is a red flag. Your prescriber should not be increasing your dose of your GLP-1 willy-nilly. If you're losing weight on the current dose, why go up? There's no need to lose weight rapidly because that's just not good for overall health in general. I also want to say that usually between the ages of 20 and 30, women have their bone density set. There are things that can be done to preserve bone density, and there are medications that can be taken to possibly increase bone density a tiny bit, but usually between the ages of 20 and 30, your bone density is your bone density. So if you are a young woman and you're not drinking any milk, if you're not eating any dairy, you are at risk to have just a lower bone density in general, and especially if you're very thin. So I would recommend if you are a young woman that you're getting enough calcium and vitamin D. Citracal and Caltrate are two options that I like. I actually especially like Citracal because you don't have to take it with food. And so if you're a young woman you might, and you're not doing dairy at all, you're you're at risk for lower bone density just in general, and you have a window of opportunity that you need to take, and you need to try to build your bone density to the highest level that you can before you start to age and start to begin losing bone density. Also, exercise, exercise, exercise. Weight-bearing exercise is another way that you can help preserve bone density throughout your entire life, but especially when you're losing weight. I also wanna tell the women that are pre-menopausal out there that if you are not having a regular period, you are also at risk for developing osteoporosis. Estrogen and progesterone are wonderful hormones. They're protective of our heart. They're protective of our bones. And so if your bones are not getting washed with estrogen and progesterone every month because you're not having a period, that's something that you need to go talk to your doctor about. My prediction is that for this young woman, she lost weight rapidly. She had not gotten the proper nutrition throughout her childhood and early adulthood. And probably because of the rapid weight loss and the stress that she put her body in, she probably was not having regular periods as well. I do appreciate that this woman spotlights that these medications are not to be played with. <laughs> They're not for the casual dieter, that's looking to lose five to 10 pounds. These are powerful medications that are used for the treatment of obesity. If you're getting them from an unreliable source or for someone that doesn't know how to use them correctly, you're setting yourself up for long-term consequences that could be negative and permanent. I hope that helps. I hope that clears up some misconceptions. Thank you for joining me.